Hi, Michael here with another quick Photoshop tip. This one is about working with a portrait and a headshot and giving it that nice smooth skin that we like to see in more of a, a glamour portrait. So what we're gonna do is I am going to start and show you how we're gonna take an image that looks really good at first, nice. It's got a, you know, a little dark spots, a little light spots, a little bit of blemishes here and there. And we're gonna go from that to that. And it's gonna be non-destructively done in layers and really gonna be easy for you to follow, okay? So we're gonna start with the image and here we go. And here's my base image. And the first thing I do, like I said, it was non-destructive is I'm gonna hit Control J, Command J if you're on a Mac, and I'm just gonna duplicate the layer. Starting there, and then what I'm gonna do on top of that is I'm gonna put a blank layer, and the blank layer is where I'm gonna do a lot of my retouching. I'm gonna zoom in. And one thing with the blank layer, what you wanna make sure it says in the top is when I'm using the clone stamp, is right up in here, you'll see it says all layers. And I want it to say all layers because I wanna make sure that when I'm using a blank layer, since there's actually nothing on it, I'm taking the information from the layer below it. So that's what we're gonna work on. We're gonna start with that. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna use the healing brush. And I'm gonna get rid of some of these easy to see blemishes, just the bigger ones, because they really won't clear up as easy uh, by using the, the skin softening technique I'm gonna show you. And these usually are a lot easier to do this way. Sometimes they just, just don't come out as clean as you might want. So I'm gonna do it pretty quick. I'm gonna hit most of them. Uh, you can do whatever you like. You know, uh, the reason I'm doing this on a layer too is sometimes you might, for example, she has a nose ring. If I retouch that out and the person sees the porch and says, oh, you know, I wanna keep that in, by using this layer, I can bring it back. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm on that blank layer. And if I shut off the other layers, you can see the spots I cleaned, that's all they are. They're just skin tones on a blank layer. So if I wanted to get rid of that nose ring, and I'll just paint that out right now, it's gone. And you can see where it was, is right there. But if I decide I don't want that, I can literally go back, get rid of what I just did, and it's back. So again, it's non-destructive. You can go back and change things. I'm gonna do a couple more spots because I don't spend too much time on this part. And again, this is simple and easy, you know, so we're just definitely using the uh, healing brush. If you want to get rid of some stray hairs, this is the time to do it. So if I want to get rid of that one couple long stray hairs there going down, we can get rid of that. Real easy. And this is the same technique I use if I'm getting rid of power lines uh, in a sky because it's real easy, nice straight lines. And we'll get rid of that one mole right there. There's a little dark spot. That's good for now. Nice and clean, nothing special. I didn't go over the top. Another thing I wanna show you before we get to the skins moving is how to get rid of some of these shines. Now these shines aren't too bad, but sometimes in a portrait you might have a spot that just shines. You know, you get that glow, the light hit it wrong, sunlight or your strobe, or so it's a little bright. So I'm gonna show you how to get rid of that. And again, another easy step. So again, what I'm gonna do is make another layer. So if you look over here now, I have multiple layers. I have layer one, two, and three. The layer two is the layer that I just did the retouching on. Layer three right now is just a blank layer, okay? And we're gonna keep that. So we're gonna get rid of, we're gonna work on that new layer. Again, all layers is still sampled, but this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my eyedropper and find a piece of skin color right around here. And I'm gonna capture that color. So you, if you notice, when I capture the color, way over here, now my front color is that skin tone I just captured. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with that. And I'm gonna get a nice soft paintbrush, you know, and that's, let's see, make it about that big. And I'm gonna use it at 100% right now. And I'm just gonna paint right over where it was. Now, all I'm doing is painting that skin color over her face right there. And I'm gonna do it again. Now, sometimes I'll do this in two steps, but again, for this, I'll just do it all in one. This shine there, I'm gonna take another piece of color there because it's a little lighter. Make the brush a little bit smaller. 
and paint that in right here, just where that shine was. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into that layer and just change the opacity and knock it down to about 30 for the, I wanna keep some shine, you don't wanna make it flat. So we're gonna go from that and knock the opacity down to about 30%. So if you could see there it was before and after. We still, actually I think it's a little too much. I'm gonna make it, make the opacity about actually 20% because I really want some of that shine. It brings some character to the portrait. So I'm gonna make that 20%, there you go. And you can see, you know, there is before and after. Subtle difference, but it's a difference. Okay, now here's where we get into the skin uh, softening. So what I'm gonna do right now is I am gonna click and hold on and make sure all three of my layers are highlighted. And when they're all highlighted, all I have to do is right click on the highlighted. So I, again, to highlight them all, I held the shift key down and clicked on all three layers, right click, and you see it says convert to smart object. And I'm gonna click on that. And now this, all three layers are combined together. They're still separate layers, but they're a smart object, which means I can always go back and retouch it. And the way you know that they're a smart object is right next to the layer, you'll see this little symbol right there. And that's telling you it's a smart object. So now I am gonna go and I am gonna work on that smart object. So what I'm gonna do is from there, I'm gonna to go to my filters, my camera raw filter, and that's gonna bring up this interface. And this interface is a lot, very, very similar to what is in Lightroom. And one of the great things that they've added was they added uh, sliders for texture, clarity, dehaze, and these work really well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm working basically with texture and clarity. So I'm taking that texture down, and what I find is, in this image, I've used it before, if I take it down to 100%, it's a little too smooth. <clears throat> so I like it right up between 70 and 80%. So we're gonna go about right in the middle, let's put the difference about 75%, and you can already see how smooth this got. So we can back that down a little bit. There you go, a little too tight there, there we go. And you can see really how smooth that got. All right, and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the clarity down just a little bit, not too much, just a little. And again, so that smooths the skin out. And then if you notice up top, there's also the detail, sharp, sharpening detail. You can soften things, but you can keep parts of it sharp. And I'm gonna use the sharpening adjustment and just bring that up to about four, three or four, four looks good, to keep some of the fine details. So once I do that, once I have my texture where I want it, and that looks pretty good, I like that, I hit okay. And it does its filter, and now you see that the whole image is nice and soft. Again, though, it the whole image. It softened the hair, it softened, if there was anything in the background, that would be soft, it softened her eyes, and I don't want that. So now what I'm gonna do is, when I did the smart filter, it gives me a, a mask. So what I'm gonna do is I'm clicking on the mask, which is the white, and again, I'll show you what I'm talking about. When I click on the mask, it always, anytime you do a smart filter, it brings up a mask and you see the mask comes right there and I click on it and I get those little brackets around it. So with those little brackets around it, now I know it's active. And by hitting Control I, Command I, if you're on a Mac, it turned it and filled it with black. So if you remember, white reveals, black conceals. So black, now this whole layer is black, and if you notice, the texture is gone. There's nothing showing. So what I'm gonna do now is using a white brush, I am gonna just paint where I want the effect. And now you can see, as it comes back, and really, so I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see, now I'm bringing the effect back. And a good spot to see it would be here. Zoom out just a little bit and make the bright pretty big. And I can really soften the skin tone in her neck. You can really see how nice and soft that got. Now there's some areas you might want the effect, but not 100%. For example, under her nose and under her eyes, because I want to keep some of those lines for character. So instead of using the brush at 100%, I'm going to change the opacity of that brush to 20, about 25% and just go slightly under the eyes. It softens a little bit, slightly under the nose. And you can see it just really just brought that effect in soft. If you want to paint something back, you don't like what you did, like for example, 
the nose ring, which is a diamond, and it's now not shiny. I can just change my brush, hitting the X key, turning it to uh, black instead of white, and make the brush small. I can paint that back in. If I wanna make sure the eyebrows are sharp, I can go back and paint them in with black and make sure I didn't go over her eyes at all. And bring that back and just make sure the hair is where you want it didn't hit anything so and that's it so now you can see where we were before and here's where we are now it still has personality it still has character but it softened the skin and smoothed it now what you can do since this is a layer if you think you know what maybe that's too much take the layer and i'm knocking it down a little bit so if i go down 50 percent, you can see it brings back a lot of that but if i go up and take it to about 80 percent you can see it still has lines, still has character, but it's not as soft. All right, simple, easy, and anytime you wanna go back, the smart filter is there, the layer is there, you double click on the layer. If I wanna get rid of more hair, clean it up a little bit more, it's always there, it's always editable. So again, there's where we started with, and there's where we end, okay? So another quick tip, hopefully you'll like this one. Let me know in the comments area if there's anything else you want to see. Uh, this is a brand new page for me, so like the page. And I'll be showing you more later. Take care.